The early Triassic, only a few million years since the world's greatest mass extinction event. Since that global catastrophe, life has slowly begun to recover and repopulate the land and the sea. On the shores of what will one day be China, an odd species of reptile is preparing itself for a day of foraging. Adipodentatus is one of many strange looking creatures that typify the Triassic as a whole. This 2.8 meter long Sauropterygian has developed unique traits to survive in this competitive and often harsh world. Most obvious are their wide shovel shaped jaws lined with needle sharp teeth. An odd adaptation, but not one they use while on land. They spend their nights here sleeping on the sands and rocks, and only once they have warmed up from the rising sun, they move into the water and disappear below the waves. One female follows some members of her kind into the water, and once they submerge deep enough, they fan out in search of food. What they seek are plants. Just below the water's surface is a host of sea plants adapted to the salty water and able to survive where the sun's rays can reach. Adipodentatus are one of the rare reptiles in all of Earth's history that feed on sea plants, and this is why they have such strange jaws. The broad flat surface is excellent for mowing over as much area as possible, so their teeth can easily cut through soft material but also can be used to sift through the seabed when searching for a meal. The female casually swims through the shallow water, looking for an area that doesn't already have a resident adipotentatus. Like all sea reptiles, they have to return to the surface to breathe, and this is when hungry individuals will swoop in and steal a good spot. But the shallowest areas are taken, so she swims to slightly deeper water. There is plenty of food here, but the Adipodentatus need to eat huge amounts in order to get enough nutrients, which is why when the opportunity presents itself, they will try and snap up any fish that get too close. But all too often the reptiles miss their targets. Their wide jaws built for grazing and sifting, not snapping up fast moving fish. Some fish, like the coelacanths, are too large to be attacked by the Adipodentatus, and so mingle with the herbivores unopposed. But there are other marine reptiles here as well, such as the ichthyosaurs, far more well developed for life in the oceans than the Adipodentatus. They have become specialized fish hunters, even looking quite fish-like themselves. They do not pose a threat to the Adipodentatus, but they barely tolerate each other, and whenever the ichthyosaurs get close, the smaller reptiles open their mouths wide, baring their teeth and shake their heads in a threat display. The female finds a vacant patch of rocks and begins to feed, knowing that she is now closer to open water, where more dangerous predators lurk. Everything from sharks to basal nothosaurs. But she is also fighting against a clock. Being cold-blooded, the water saps her body heat, and her kind have to return to the shore to bask in the sun and reheat, or risk freezing. The water also gets colder the further from the shore, and the deeper down she swims, so she is playing a risky game. As the water chill begins to set in, the female notices a shadow pass over her. She goes still, and slowly turns her head upwards, and sees a wide and round shape. It is a Cynosorphagus, a reptile that bears many similarities to turtles, but is in fact not related to them at all. The Adipodentatus is relieved to see the round reptile as opposed to a predator, and decides now is a good time to return to shore. After a brief swim, she rides the waves back into the sandy beach, and looks for a good rock to perch on. As the day gets hotter, she will be able to stay out and feed for longer, as will the rest of her kind. Adipodentatus evolved when there was little competition, and fill a niche that is mostly vacant, but as the world recovers and more species adapt to the healing world, competition will inevitably increase, and the Adipodentatus will have to adapt or go extinct. Hello fellow travelers and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the marine reptile that was once thought to have a zipper face, Adipodentatus. Adipodentatus's first remains were found in 2014 in the Yunnan province of China. This area is known for its exceptionally well-preserved fossils, and the first Adipodentatus skeleton was no different. However, the skull of the animal was crushed sideways, 
leaving scientists the difficult job of reconstructing it. The way it was preserved left the team to believe that Adipodentatus had a weird vertically opening upper jaw that in some ways resembled a zipper. This was truly baffling, and with this reconstruction, they theorized that Adipodentatus was some sort of filter feeder or sifted through the ocean floor looking for small prey. Thankfully, two more well-preserved skeletons would be found, and put to rest this previous model, though in some ways it was just as strange. These new finds show that Adipodentatus had a unique shovel or hammer-like skull, and more unusual teeth that the first skeleton didn't have but we'll get to that later. Adipodentatus itself was a basal sauropterygian that lived between 247 and 240 million years ago in the early Triassic, only a few million years after the Permian-Triassic mass extinction. It grew to 2.8 meters long, about 30 centimeters tall, and weighed between 10 and 20 kilograms. It had a long, slender body, with limbs that had developed into basic flippers and a long tail that was broad and used for propulsion. All these indicate that Adipodentatus was at least semi-aquatic, similar to seals or crocodilians today. It's Adipodentatus' head that is by far the most unusual part of its body. It had an elongated snout that spread out horizontally, creating a wide, flat, hammerhead-like structure with two different sets of teeth. At the front of the jaws were thick, chisel-like teeth, and further back in the jaws were hundreds of thin, needle-like teeth which were the ones thought to act like a zipper. So what on earth was it using these teeth for? We don't have anything like it today, so scientists compared it to another Triassic sauropterygian, which had some similar dentition. Experts believe that both of these reptiles are actually herbivores feeding on algae and other sea plants that grew in shallow water. Adipodentatus would use the front chisel-like teeth to scrape or shear plant matter off of rocks or the seafloor, it would then suck in the floating plant particles into its mouth, and then push the water out, and the food would get caught in the thin needle-like teeth, which it would then swallow. This second stage is similar to how filter feeders like baleen whales collect and swallow food. This strange feeding strategy shows that Adipodentatus was specialized to graze in the shallow bays it lived in, and also makes it the oldest herbivorous marine reptile ever discovered. This is an incredible find, as herbivorous marine reptiles are rare in the fossil record, and the only living ones are marine iguanas and some turtles. So why go after plants, I hear you ask? Well, one theory is niche partitioning. Adipodentatus may have had to specialize in this odd food source, because other species outcompeted it in other niches, such as fish hunters or even land herbivores. The Gu Ling Formation, where it was found, has, as I said earlier, provided many excellent fossils, showing that despite the fact the Earth only just went through its worst extinction event, this region at least had recovered quite well, as it's full of fish and marine reptiles, including ichthyosaurs, coelacanths, pachypleurosaurs, and even Tanistrotheus, who I've done a video on. Though we seem to know plenty about Adipodentatus, we know basically nothing about where it fits on its family tree. It is currently listed as a Sauropterygian, but that's a very broad classification, as this order includes plesiosaurs, pliosaurs, and a whole lot of other reptiles that look very similar to each other. We don't know, for instance, if before becoming secondarily aquatic, what its ancestors looked like, and though they were likely carnivores, did they transition to herbivory before venturing into the ocean? Since we also don't have much evidence for other marine herbivores, it's hard to say if this route of evolution went much further for Adipodentatus' line, but hopefully more finds will shed light on these details. So, Adipodentatus, a fascinating and unique creature from a time period where being weird was kind of the norm. Also, its head looks like some sort of vacuum nozzle attachment. But what do you think of Adipodentatus? And for my question of the week, do you think marine herbivory was more common in prehistory than we know? What lesser known extinct creature would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.